Thank you so much, Walter. I'm delighted to be here uh, with all of you and so many folks here from Reedsboro uh, who have lived in this community and been blessed by the first wind project in Vermont, which I can remember driving past many, many times uh, and visiting uh, from when I was a kid, really. How long has that been here? How come you look at me with a blank steel? You lived here a long time. When, 98? Was that 98? Wow. Well, listen, I'm really honored to be here, and I'm excited to be here with so many of you that understand how important this project is to Vermont and how important it is for our kids and grandkids in terms of having a livable planet. And I just want to thank this company for their persistence, for their patience. I want to thank the federal government and the uh, Forest Service, who I know is here today, uh, for sticking with us and uh, supporting very carefully uh, this project. But most importantly, this to the communities. And, you know, I look at John Moran here, who's been uh, 12 years uh, in support of this project, helping to make it happen, and so many other people that work so hard. Listen, let me just talk very candidly about why this matters. As a kid who was born and raised in this county, well, we're kind of on the Bennington side right now, but awful close, just over the line. When I look at how our climate has changed since I was a kid, it's remarkable. If you think about it, we used to have snow in the wintertime. It was predictable every single year. Think about it. Jobs, economic development. Last year, two years ago, we had over 4 million skiers come to Vermont to help support jobs in our economy. Last winter, because of the warm climate, that dropped to 3 million skiers. That's jobs, that's economic development. It never got cold enough to have a good ski season. I can tell you as someone who has hunted all my life, we didn't used to see buckthorn in the woods. We didn't used to see invasive species. We didn't used to be able to hunt in our running shoes in November because our toes would have frozen off. Now one can more often than not. So anyone thinks who thinks that we don't have to move as quickly as we can to get off of coal, to get off of oil, and to move to renewables is living in denial. So let's just talk about the last six years. When I ran for governor, I said, we are going to shut down the aging, leaking nuclear power plant down in the valley. We're going to build out renewables. And when we do it, we'll put money in Vermonters' pockets. We'll create jobs. And most importantly, we'll reduce our carbon footprint as we move from solar and wind and other renewables, energy efficiency, away from fossil fuels. Well, you can remember what the folks said. My opponent said, oh, the lights are going to go out. Rates are going to go up, and he's a jobs killer. Well, I want to address that. Six years later, we stand here today inaugurating yet another wind project. What have we done in six years? We have 11 times the number of solar panels in the state that we had when I took office, 11 times. We have 22 times the amount of wind power that we had in this state when I took office, and this project is going to help to elevate that number. What's it done? Right now, we have one of the lowest unemployment rates in the country. We've created over 17,000 new jobs in this little state since I became governor. But let me tell you something about those jobs. A lot of them are in the renewable energy sector. It's folks putting up solar panels, building wind, and making a renewable energy future to get us to our energy goal of 90% renewable by 2050. So let's talk about that. If you have 17 Vermonters in a room right now, one of them has a job in a renewable energy market. One of them has a job, one out of 17. That's huge. Let me tell you something about those folks. They don't look like me. They got no gray hair. They don't have wrinkles. They don't have big bags under their eyes. They're young. They're the people we want to bring to Vermont and keep in Vermont. They're excited about Vermont's future. They're about to make babies and put them in our schools and bring more young people to Vermont. 
They're drinking the best beer you can find anywhere in the world and eating the world's best cheese. You know, I'm the governor that got to, to move the World American Cheese Award from one Vermont farm to another Vermont farm. Take that, Wisconsin. Scott Walker, you know, your cheese sucks. But it's all happening here in Vermont. So here's my point. What did we do? We built out renewables. We created jobs. But here's the point no one wants to talk about. We put money in Vermonters' pockets. We put money in Vermonters' pockets. How? Look at our neighbors right now. Today, Vermont has lower electric rates than every state that borders us that's part of the United States. New York's rates are higher. Massachusetts rates are higher. You can live free and die in New Hampshire, but you'll play higher electric rates because theirs are higher than Vermont's. How else did we put money in Vermonters' pockets? Our largest utility in this state, 80% of Vermonters who are going to be buying the power from this 15 turbines that we're inaugurating today, Green Mountain Power, for four of the last five years, their rates have gone either down or been flat, not up. Guess where they went up? Everywhere else in New England. If you don't believe me, talk to some of the businesses over there and live free and die. Some of the rates went up two years ago 50%. Some went up 100%. That hurts. It hurts folks who are struggling to pay their bills. It hurts businesses who are trying to manufacture. It hurts the economy. So my point's a simple one. I couldn't be here with more enthusiasm. If we don't think that wind, sited properly, is in Vermont's best interests, you're not looking at the evidence. It grows jobs, it reduces rates, and it puts money in Vermonters' pockets. I don't know what else we could ask for. So listen, I'll just close by saying this. Congratulations. We got to do a lot more of this, not a lot less of this. And when you hear folks say, let's take a pause, we're moving too fast, can't we slow down? I say, ask the ski areas whether we can slow down. Ask the folks who are seeing the effects of climate change on our economy. Most importantly, ask anyone under the age of 25 whether they think we can slow down. We've created an extraordinary mess, burning oil and coal with irrational exuberance. It's now our responsibility to do everything we can to move quickly to get off of fossil fuels. And there's no better way to do it than energy efficiency, which Vermont is doing right, than building out solar, which Vermont is doing right, and building out wind in the right places, which Vermont is doing right. So I am so proud to be here with this team. I want to thank them for their patience. I understand there are divergent views on this issue. But here's the point. When you see signs like we saw coming up here that say, you know, you got to watch out for the bears and watch out for the bats. Listen, I'll tell you one thing about this governor. I love our black bears and I love our bats, but I do not discriminate based on color. I like our polar bears too. And they're drowning because the ice cap is melting faster than the scientists ever thought they would. The bats are dying around the globe because, not despite, burning oil and coal. So if you really believe, you better fight for all the bears, you better fight for all the bats, and you better fight for all the human beings that live on this planet, and the way you do it is with renewables. Go team, I'm proud of you.